Singapore has come a long way since the tumultuous early days of nationhood. For six decades, we've made steady progress. All this has only been possible because Singapore has been well governed all these years. The fundamental question is, what does governing Singapore well take? In my view, there are three key factors. First, good policies and good politics. Second, a good public service and a good political leadership. And third, the right relationship between the public service and the political leadership. The public service is principally concerned with making and implementing policies. Getting policies right is crucial because only good policies can turn dreams and aspirations into reality. As public officers, you know better than most that policy making is very hard. You first need to identify the right objectives in order to tackle the correct problems. Then you need to devise sound plans and actions to address these objectives. You need to understand the issues thoroughly, come up with imaginative ideas, work out coherent and effective schemes, anticipate difficulties, and plan well ahead. Having settled on the policies, you have to implement them, track how they work out, and how people are responding to them. Then you must revise and improve them and make sure they continue working for Singaporeans. And so the cycle begins afresh. But the public service does not make policies in a technocratic vacuum. To function effectively, you must understand the political context within which the government functions. You must understand the external strategic environment in which we exist, the national challenges we face, the hopes and concerns of the people, and the overarching national objectives we are striving to achieve. And you have to embrace these hopes, concerns, and objectives. For their part, the political leadership are principally concerned with the political aspects. Ministers have to set the overall direction for the nation with the best interests of Singapore and Singaporeans at heart. They respond to the strategic needs of the country and the deep aspirations of the population. They make political choices on how the country should move forward. They must hold their own in the political contest winning the public debate by persuading those who hold opposing views, rebutting wrong criticisms while adopting useful ideas. But ministers cannot confine themselves narrowly to politics. Ministers who just preside ceremonially over their ministries, setting grand objectives and then leaving the hard work of getting things done to their public officers, add no value. To be effective, ministers must master the policies too. Only then can they give clear guidance and direction to their officials and work closely together with the public service to develop good policies. Only then will they be able to make sound political decisions on which path to take and how to make the trade-offs which are unavoidable in government. Only then will they carry conviction when they pitch their policies to the public, having been personally involved in working them out and grasping why things have to be done in one way and not another. This is what we and the public expect of ministers in Singapore. We've held ourselves to this standard all these years. It is an important reason why we've been able to come up with and implement good policies for the nation. Just as important as having good ministers and a good public service is establishing the right relationship between the two. Each has its respective role and must do it well. The respective responsibilities have to be kept clear and the lines properly drawn so that the system can work properly. But at the same time, both sides must work closely together with mutual trust, respect, and understanding 
to achieve the ideal combination of the policies and politics to deliver results for the country. John Claude Juncker, former Luxembourg PM and later a European Commission President, explained it well. He said, we all know what to do, but we don't know how to get re-elected re once we have done it. In other words, in those countries, governments find that doing the right thing is not politically feasible. And then political leaders of all parties default to populism or short-termism to stay in power. Thankfully, Singapore has been an exception to this rule. The political leadership and the public service will need to work closely together like this on a whole range of other strategic issues, whether it's public transport, immigration, or income inequality. Each will need to do its part so that together the political leadership and the public service can come up with good policies, persuade Singaporeans to support them, and make the policies succeed. And, if I may say so, therefore, enable our politics to succeed, to succeed. We must do our best to keep our government functioning in this way for as long as we can. What does this depend on? At the national level, we need to maintain and renew a high-quality political leadership. Continue to attract good people to join politics. Renew the trust and confidence between the political leaders and the population from generation to generation ensure a well-functioning political system, which will enable the public service to make its full contribution. For its part, the public service plays a major role in keeping Singapore exceptional. We place high demands on our public servants, and especially on this group, our public service leaders. You have to set the tone and direction in your respective organisations, and show your colleagues and subordinates, by personal example, what the public service stands for. We have a full agenda in the years ahead, upgrading our economy, maintaining our relevance on the international stage, caring for an aging population, consolidating our racial harmony and social cohesion. The task of preparing for the future never ends, but we must give ourselves every chance to keep on succeeding. Remember Juncker's dictum that governments know what they need to do, but none of them know how to get re-elected after doing it. Singapore has been a counterexample so far, but we are by no means exempt from the rule. We too are subject to the same political pressures and incentives that other countries face. Singaporeans' expectations and aspirations are rising and so too their demands on the government. As growth becomes harder to come by, as revenues become less buoyant, as our politics become more fiercely contested, things can go wrong for us too. If electoral margins get slimmer, the government will have less political space to do the right thing. It will become harder to disregard short-term considerations in decision-making the political dynamics will become very different. Singaporeans must understand the dangers this creates, and so must the public service. I'm sounding this caution because it's a different world out there. As the world changes, and as the generations change, we must do our best to renew our system, to ensure that it continues to work well for us, even as things change. Good policies and good policies and good politics will continue to be key. Therefore, let us transmit to the new generation the conviction and sense of mission to serve Singapore and renew the relationship between the public service and the political leadership. You can depend on the ministers to do our part, and I trust that you will do your utmost as leaders in the public service working together with the ministers to take Singapore forward with a new generation at the helm.